Hey everyone, this is going to be a data analysis video where we perform exploratory data analysis on the Ford car price prediction dataset to see which factors affect the price of a used car. The dataset is available on Kaggle and consists of various features that affects the price of a used car. Which of these factors do you think will be more correlated to the sales price of a car? Let me know in the comment section below. Now if you want to know how to perform machine learning on this dataset, I've done a separate video on this topic and I'll add links to it in the description box below. Before moving forward, if you like my videos and want to see more contents related to this topic, please do leave a like and hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notification to stay updated each time I upload a new video. Stay tuned. So first let's import the required libraries. So here we are using pandas for basic data operations. We are importing cborn and matplotlib for various data visualizations. And then we are setting the style for the plots. And here we are setting the style as cborns. Now that we have imported the required libraries, let's load the CSV file. And let's use head function to see the first five entries in the dataset. To get some more information about the dataset, we can use the info method. So this returns us the number of entries, the rows, the columns and the data type of the entries. Now from the info method, we can see that there are no null values in the dataset. However, if we want to check for null values explicitly, we can use the isNullSum function. Now to get more statistical information about the dataset like the count, the mean, max, etc. We can use a describe method. So this gives us the statistical details of the numerical entries in a dataset. Now to get all the names of the columns in the dataset, we can use a dot columns method. So this gives us all the columns in a dataset. Now let's visualize the different transmission types in our dataset along with its count. To perform this, I am going to use a count plot. Let's add a title to the plot. And now we have a plot showing the count of the different transmission types in a dataset. And the majority of cars in a dataset consists of manual transmission. Now instead of using a count plot, we can also visualize the distribution of the different transmissions using a pie chart. Now let's see how to do that. So first let's create a simple pie chart. So to do that, let's specify the initial tags in our pie chart. Then let's plot the pie chart. And let's add a heading to it. Now we have a distribution of the different transmission types along with their corresponding proportion. Now as I said earlier, this is a simple pie chart. Now let's see how to customize this pie chart to make it look better. So here we'll be creating an exploded pie chart. So first let's define a figure size. And then let's set the colors for the three different transmission types. Then let's define the line width and the edge color.
Now let's specify the different tags in our pie chart. And then let's specify the distance for how much the wedges should be exploded. So now we have a more customized pie chart. Now similarly, let's use a count plot to visualize the count of the different fuel types. Now instead of plotting the fuel type on the x axis, we can also plot it on the y axis. So to do this, we can just change the x and replace it with a y. So now as you can see, it is plotted on the y axis. Now from these count plots, we can infer that the majority of cars in the data set have the fuel type as petrol. But we cannot see the count for hybrid, electric and other types as a count is very low. Now to see these values, you can use the valuecons function. Now we have a count of the different fuel types. The count for hybrid, electric and other types is very less. That is why we couldn't see them in the count plot. What do you think will be the other fuel type for Ford cars? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now let's visualize the relationship between the categorical columns and the price of the cars. So to do this, let's create a variable to store the data from the columns. Now let's visualize the data using a bar plot. So from this we can infer that based on fuel type, hybrid vehicles have a high price point and based on the transmission, automatic vehicles have a slightly higher price point. Now instead of using bar plot, we can also visualize the data using box and plot. Box and plots are an advancement of box plot and are designed to visualize the data distribution more accurately. So let's plot box and plot for the same data. Now that we have analyzed the categorical data, let's analyze some of the numerical data as well. So we can start by plotting histogram of the year column. As we can see, the cars in our data set are in the range from the year 2000 to 2020. Now let's visualize the distribution of the price in our data set using a distance plot. Now let's plot a histogram to visualize all the other numerical data.
So now we have a plot showing the distribution of the numerical data. If you want to know more about histograms or other visualization techniques, you can check out my visualization playlist. I'll add links to it in the description down below. Now let's use a scatter plot to visualize how the price of a car is dependent on its fuel economy. So while we are setting the scatter plot, we'll be setting the hue as transmission type to see its effect on the plot. Similarly, let's change the hue to fuel type to see the effect of fuel type on the economy versus price. Before proceeding with further analysis, let's perform ordinal encoding on the categorical coordinates. Ordinal encoding is done to convert the categorical values into numerical values by assigning an integer value to each unique entry in the categorical column. So let's perform ordinal encoding. So here I am replacing manual with 0, automatic with 1, semi-automatic with 2 and likewise petrol with 0, diesel with 1, hybrid with 2, electric with 3 and other type with 4. In place equal to true to replace it in the same data frame. Now let's use the head function to see the modified data frame. Now let's plot the different model types of the cars in a data set. So just like we saw before, there are some cars which have a very low value and that is why we can't see them on the count plot. So to get the count of these different car models, let's use the value counts method. So now we have a count of the different car models. For further analysis, let's remove the model column from the dataset. And then let's view the modified data set. To see the correlation between the different columns in a data set, let's use the correlation function. So this might be a bit hard to compare and understand, so let's use a heat map to make things easier. Using a heat map will help us to visually understand the data easier.
See, now that looks easier to compare and find out. Lighter values indicate a high correlation and darker values indicate a low correlation. So from the heat map, we can infer that the price has a high correlation with the year. Now we can also print and sort the correlation values for the price column. As we can see, the columns are arranged in an ascending order of correlation. So we can conclude our data analysis by saying that the price of a used car will depend mainly on its manufacturing year, followed by its engine size and its tax. Before concluding this video, let's do a regression plot to see the correlation between the manufacturing year and the price of the car. As we can see, majority of the points pass through a straight line. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got some idea on performing exploratory data analysis on this dataset. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. And also, please do leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.